The last spell is a tactical, turn-based RPG roguelite with some base building and tower defense mechanics, which is a weird description for a game I must admit. The best way I can find to explain it is that it's a cross between XCOM, Darkest Dungeon, and They Are Billions, set in a fantasy world and backed by a fantastic metal soundtrack. If that mishmash description is not enough to sell you on the game, then you should stick around as I ask and answer the simple question, should you make time for the last spell? In the last spell, you are a commander tasked with leading a group of elite mercenaries to defend the haven where the ritual casting of the last spell is taking place. During the night, waves of enemies assault the haven from multiple directions, and you must drive them off in a turn-based battle using your mercenaries. If you manage to survive the night, your team grows stronger and you can capitalize on your victory, but your enemies also start hitting harder, faster, and with more force. During the day, you are able to reinforce your haven with walls, ballistas, and watchtowers, add various buildings to help strengthen your team with equipment, gold, health, and mana, and finally level up, recruit, or replace your fallen mercenaries. This cycle continues day and night until the final boss attacks, and if you survive the multi-day onslaught, the last spell is cast and the story progresses with further secrets beginning to unfold. But if you lose, you get whisked away to try again from the start, having learned from your defeat and coming back stronger than before, with some help from unlikely allies. The micromanagement of your haven and team is deep, from purchasing and upgrading helpful buildings and arranging defenses just right, to equipping your mercenaries with the right weapons, armor, and skills. These mercenaries gain their abilities from the weapons and armor they equip, from spell slinging wands and nature controlling staves, to pistols, longbows, swords, and sledgehammers, and lots more, providing you with a ridiculous amount of combinations for your team's arsenal. And each character's looks change based on this equipment, which is a really nice touch. Your mercenaries also have their own abilities, attributes, perks, and traits. Some positive, some negative, some that are randomly rolled as you level up. All this variation can make for a highly engaging RPG experience and storytelling opportunities as you survive night after night. Barely squeaking through, or if the stars align just right with weapons and perks bulldozing enemies wave after wave. The game's turn-based system does not hinder the visceral feel and dread that comes with the waves of enemies, and heightens the feeling of commanding your mercenaries just right with every action having cascading consequences. The pixel-style graphics fit so perfectly with the game, and the combat animations of each spell and skill are unique. They are highly satisfying and come with an oomph that you can feel as you slice, pierce, or blow up each enemy, all with an amazing music soundtrack rhythmically compelling you along. The the gameplay loop of every run is deep and engaging, and you can't help always thinking one more turn or one more night, until you realize it's 5 hours later and you've only completed one or two runs, with barely having progressed much in the story. That is my main gripe in the game. It takes too long to finish a run, 2-3 to three hours for each village at least, sometimes more, only to fail and have to start over again, ever so slightly stronger. In addition, for a roguelite, the progression loop felt ridiculously long for me, especially for a first run through the story as the power upgrades are very small and barely noticeable. The game's difficulty level is high, and it gets even harder as you progress through. Even with the roguelike buffs, with mistakes early in the run, bad RNG hamstringing you, later on improvements in your haven do increase this and alleviate some RNG, but without a precise and early planning path for your mercenaries, or without being forced into a tried and true combination of weapons and perks, you might be stuck with a run that is just destined to fail. While I am aware you are supposed to fail in roguelites and only be able to progress to the next level after multiple failed attempts, the time it takes to realize fail state feels too long, and going through a run only to be completely overrun by the final boss because you didn't perfectly build your team is very disheartening. I was not able to get myself to finish the campaign before being worn out, so I can't comment on the completionist and replayability of the game, but from what I experienced, you can easily get hundreds and hundreds of hours if you wanted to. That being said, I really enjoyed my initial experience and time playing the last spell. Over a run, I felt attached to certain mercenaries and rooted for them, sometimes even being disappointed when they missed a spell and let me down, or abandoning a whole run when one of my favorite mercenaries died. The game has also garnered great support from its fans from early access to full launch, as it has maintained very positive reviews on Steam. While there is minor uproar regarding recent changes to the game and item power changes that would make the game even harder, the game is continuing with active updates and improvements. While the progression loop is slow and the difficulty is high, the last spell has deep and engaging gameplay. The UI and pixel art graphics suit the game so well and the soundtrack is just a cherry on top, wrapping everything together in a game that drives you on to say just one more night. Overall, The Last Spell successfully combines elements from many games and genres into a deep, engaging, enjoyable experience, at first. So if you really like tactical turn-based games, and the art style and music intrigues you, then you might enjoy this game for hours and hours. However, because of the eventual railroading into specific builds, the significant and almost uncalled for difficulty ramping, and slow pace of progress for a roguelike, I sadly can't recommend that you make time for the last spell. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed the review and it helped you make a decision about playing the game. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, following me on Twitch for live streams, and always make time for games.